things aren't working anymore. From global warming to terrorism to pollution to the nuclear threat, no matter how we look at it, things are getting worse. Clearly, a shift in our thinking and acting is being called for. But what are we to do? Who will make the changes needed? No one knows what we have to do to save ourselves. No one is sure how we can move from certain death to uncertain mystery. One thing is sure. If we continue the way we're going, riding the party train as though there is no tomorrow, tomorrow will come and we will be threatened with species extinction. We know that relationship is the master organizing principle of the cosmos. And we know that the universe is intolerant of any planet that uses war to resolve conflict. What we need, it appears, is a new paradigm, a new way of thinking that is so elegant and so simple that it has the power to change everything. Fortunately, just such a paradigm exists. Move to the next video in this series to learn more about what this is and how we can use it to enhance our chances for survival. Visit www.iloveshift.com to learn more. At this moment in time, we humans face a unique challenge. The context is radically shifting and we need to respond. There are new dangers and with them new opportunities. Consciousness now has become the independent variable. What this means is that we, the people, are now fully responsible for our fate and to a certain degree for the fate of all life on Earth. Fortunately, all is one. All is one is a shorthand blueprint for survival. What it means is that we are interconnected, interdependent, and interacting all the time everywhere, and that everything matters. This creative unitive paradigm is the survival resource of our time. Visit www.iloveshift.com to learn more. In the previous video, it was proposed that all is one is the survival paradigm of our time. If this is true, then it would seem worthwhile to understand collectively exactly what this means. Why collectively? Because we need each other to figure this out, and all of the power is in group thinking. When we think, talk, and share ideas, a special form of energy is created. It has a unique vibration and spreads indefinitely to reprogram the newosphere. This is a good thing. The newosphere is the thought field that surrounds the Earth. Like a global culture, it shapes and directs our thinking and worldview. If we can create a global community with a culture that works for the benefit of all life, then many minds will work together and we will have the power we need to heal our world. What to do? Share I Love Shift with as many people as you know. Our goal is to reach 1.4 billion people on Earth by the year 2020. Visit www.iloveshift.com to learn more.
as the leaders of many nations meet to discuss the threat of war, and sign treaties and propose ways to reduce arms. I would like to raise a simple question. Are we trying to build a world without war, or one which is beyond war? These worlds are radically different. George Shultz spoke recently at Stanford University. He is a strong advocate for reduction of nuclear stockpiles. He used the metaphor of climbing a mountain, and said that there was a gap between the way things are and the way we wish they would be. And that, until we close this gap, and achieve a nuclear weapons-free world, we will never be safe. He's right. But here is the problem. If we climb that mountain, and get to the top, where there are no weapons because of treaties, or other measures, or whatever external control structure we can devise, we will still have the problem. Because it is not bombs that threaten us, it is the people who make and control them, which includes ourselves. Now, how can identity, relationship and culture make a difference here? Think about some of your favorite cities in the world. Paris, Toronto, Sydney, or Honolulu. Now ask yourself, do we have ICBMs aimed at any of these cities? And, as a second question, do any of them have weapons aimed at us? The obvious answer is, no. Why? Because we have good relationships with these people, and we see ourselves connected to them in many common ways. We share some culture, and probably have economic ties with them. We travel to their cities, and they come here. We are friendly. We like them, and they like us. Get the picture? Relationship is what makes us safe, not weapons. Here are some relationship-based alternatives to war. 1. Mediation 2. Preventive Diplomacy 3. Preemptive Intervention 4. Exchange Programs 5. Sister City Programs 6. Dialogue 7. Economic Interdependence 8. Educational Programs 9. Peace Learning 10. Mutual Free Trade 11. Scientific Collaboration 12. Intercultural Exchanges There are many others, I am sure. Relationship is the master organizing principle of the cosmos. As a principle, it has existed longer than any nation, country, species, planet or even galaxy. The entire universe is based on relationship. Our solar system made itself in relationship. The Milky Way is a whirling example of the power of relationship. Water, air, sunlight, the earth are all in relationship. Bees and flowers, relationship. Trees and animals, relationship. When you think about it, everything is in relationship, and nothing is not in relationship.